we are going to be appearing at Whole Foods Market in Tustin, California. We're going to be there May 15th with Dr. Bill from Stone Brewing Company, Master Pairings, New Brew Thursday, as well as with Annette Barron, who is the creator, director, producer of the documentary Beer Wars. She's going to be there signing DVDs, possibly having them for sale, and you get to meet her. Um, Dr. Bill's going to be pairing about five beers, I think, with five different cheeses, so that's going to be pretty cool. Again, it's May 15th, 11 to 4 p.m. Be there. It's New Brew Thursday! Woo! Who are we with today? We're with Taylor Shaw, the Art of Beer. The, the Art of beer, beer, and she is representing Ladies of Craft Beer. That's right. Very, That's... very important up-and-coming uh, part of the craft beer industry. Right. So tell us a little bit about that. What is, what is Ladies of Craft Beer? Well, there is a group of girls that were com kind of conversing nationally about, you know, how great it would be to get more women involved in the beer movement and how we kind of think differently, learn differently, and, and look at things differently than men. So we thought it would be beneficial to kind of rally together so that we could encourage other women to come into something that they're comfortable with. Right on. And so when you, when you think of beer typically, uh, for the average beer drinker, you look, when you think about beer, you see the overweight dude sitting in his chair watching NASCAR drinking a Bud Light out of a can. So we can kind of see why it would be, that's like an extra little hurdle that we've got to get the women over, right? Is that kind of like what, what the idea is behind it? Why it's different from like men of craft beer or, you know. Well, what if some women like that? Ducks of craft beer, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that really that is the image of beer anymore. I, I, I give a lot more credit to the craft beer movement in general. I think it's, it is the view more to women as more a younger male. Uh, who's a little bit... Um, a younger, sexier male, perhaps. Yeah, a younger, sexier male, <laughs> obviously. Um, who's a little bit avant-garde. Um, you know, they, they're, they're the Gen Xers, the Gen Ys. They're the... Well, so you're, descri but you're describing like a metrosexual man. Uh, well, yes. Yeah, some, <laughs> you're describing some, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Brad knows I love him. I thought she was describing all the um, dudes and all the advertisements for beer that you see. Like the two young hipster guys that are mildly attractive and then they pull some hilarious hijinks and score the hottest girls in the bar and then they hold up their beer like, look, this is what this does. That's what it sounds I like. I think the key word there was hipster. Hipster, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Describe hipsters. I think in, in national advertising, of course, we're talking about macro brew beers, um, but... I think in, in a lot of metropolitan areas, as well as even some more rural areas where the craft beer movement is actually in full throttle, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's kind of a different demographic for the craft beer drinker, and there's not a lot of advertising done right. to craft beer drinkers. But women are smart enough to know that it is somewhat of a boys club, right. and it's intimidating to, to women in general. So we're drinking today, we're drinking Frambois de Amorosa. Would you consider this a ladies' beer? Um, I think this would be a great gateway beer for women who like fruity drinks or are wine drinkers because this is going to be something that doesn't shock their palate like a hoppy IPA. Right. And so I think that this is something that if a woman were fortunate enough to be able to try this, they would go, wow, I never thought a beer would taste like this. Yeah, and I have some female wine drinkers in my life that I've kind of... Um, given like supplication to or the brewery's hot and rough and I think the sours do make a really good transitional beer because yeah, it's totally. a little bit easier to get make that transition from wine over to beer with those but or like the frambois lambics or... yeah and like this this is gonna this is not gonna be sour necessarily right this is gonna be more of a sweeter kind of frambois well, this is a Lost Abbey beer, and um, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of, of Lost Abbey beers, um, especially uh, the styles that are more to the sour. Uh, Tommy I. Arthur put a lot of money into this beer. It's made with a lot of fresh raspberries. It's going to have um, some sour to it, but it's not going to be over the top sour like a lot of, mm. like a duck duck It's going to be tart. It's going to be tart, yeah. but it's still going to have an underlying sweetness to it that I think is something that's very pleasing to it a woman. smells delicious. Oh, it looks good, all. too. And I love yeah. these glasses. Uh, Can't these, wait to get mine. These are my favorite Lost Abbey glasses. So. Can we get a cheers oh, wow. up in here? Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cheers. 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 Cheers to ladies and craft beer. Absolutely. And to amazing craft beer. And I think the great thing about Lost Abbey is, um, you know, their beers are really not marketed to men. 
Um, that's one of the things I like about them. The brewery as well. Um, you know, some of the certainly not specifically to men. No, their yeah. their labels are and their the names of their beer are actually something you know that a woman could probably get her arms around a little bit better. Um, but that being said, I don't think that there's any women who are into craft beer that are in any way, shape, or form offended by arrogant bastard or. Oh no. There's a group of women that are all over the country, and 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 a yeah. lot of them I would actually say are more like I was when I was younger. I was a little bit of a girly girl. Right. I, I was a nerd, but I, I like things that are girl. I, I'm, you know, I dress, you know, like a girl most of the time. But so I think there's there's a, a plethora of styles and I think what's really wonderful is this is something to bring a, a, a lot of different diverse women together with something that they enjoy. There's closet beer female beer drinkers out there. And a lot of them are gonna be macro beer drinkers. But those are like what I consider to be an excellent opportunity yeah. to, to bring someone over from the fence, sitting on the fence, over to beers like this. Because I guarantee you, anybody that gets to try Lost Abbey, Frambois, Damarosa mm -hmm. is is going to be, you know. It's an amazing beer. Yeah, this, I think, really hits the lamb the Frambois style perfectly. I, I like the way this, this feels. And it does have that nice sweetness on the back end, but it's it got the tart right away. and. Yeah, and I think as it, as this beer ages, um, some of the the sour um, might mellow a little bit as the raspberries mature. Um, I understand uh, Tommy spent a lot of money on fresh raspberries for this beer, mm -hmm. so it was a very expensive beer to make, and it's a, a very limited release. People right. were lined up at seven o'clock in the morning. Um, there was uh, several hundred people in line. They released this the same day as Veritas, right? Yes. Yeah, which, oh, wow. yeah, which was that, even which smaller. creates even more of a. <laughs> Yeah. Right, there was only so. 35 cases of Veritas released, and I believe there was about eight or 900 of this, but right I think on. it's sold out already. So what are we eating with it? Because all of this stuff looks yeah. amazing. What, a better question is what aren't we eating? Yeah, seriously, things? we got like all kinds of stuff here. Okay, well, um, I wanted to do several things because I didn't want you to be hungry, so um, <laughs> I at, doc, at Dr. Bill's ladies recommendation, of ladies of craft beer, always want to you know take, take care, care of, of people, them. both no male and female. Um, Dr. Bill recommended um, a, a chevre, a goat cheese, mm -hmm. and so I got a few different selections. Um, the um, This one is a, a sharp cheddar goat cheese, which I had never had before. It was an interesting uh, flavor. Hmm. This is a, a Cypress G Midnight Moon, which is a hard um, aged uh, goat cheese, so it's got a little more sharpness to it. And then to balance it, uh, a Saint um, Agur blue cheese, which is one of my favorite because it's very creamy. And then the uh, Chimay Grand Cru, which is just oh, yeah. a great pungent nice. cheese that balances well with sours. Yeah. With sours. Um, and then a crab cake with a um, with a mango uh, chutney on top. Um, so not any spice to it, but you know, pretty toned down because Dr. Bill said shellfish would be excellent. And then finishing off with some raspberry lemon tarts and uh, chocolate chip cherry cookies um, from Extraordinary wow. oh, Desserts. Geez. Nice. So um, oh, basically, salad, I'm basically. going to explode oh, in a little bit. And the salad is just a simple uh, baby greens with uh, some feta uh, goat cheese and some mm. glazed walnuts. So delish. Mm. Mm, yeah, good. and as usual, you know, Dr. Bill never fails to provide good, good recommendations. It's interesting because a lot of people that are I highly respect with craft beer. Uh, M. Dolomite being one, was very anti the crab cake with the spear. Dr. Bill was the one that said, yeah, that, that would be okay as long as there's no spice to it. And I have to say. It works well. It actually works well. Oh, yeah. And mm. I think it kind of brings out um, a little more of the sour in the beer. Yeah. It definitely cuts the sweetness down. It brings the tart back a little bit up. It almost brings it up to the, not quite to the level of a sour, but it's definitely got the, you, you feel the tart a little bit more with it. Yeah, that's really what good. What was with the, the cheese on the salad? Uh, it's just a, a plain uh, goat cheese, just a regular, you know, the chef. I feel like that really brings out the uh, like the tartness. I want to try some of that cheddar goat cheese. The one on this, okay. Yeah, yeah oh, it's yeah. really interesting. I mean, mm. it, it really is hard to define, um, you know, what. What, what it is, I mean, I tasted it earlier, and it's, it's I've really honestly never had anything like this before, so. Mm. It's it's unusual, it's uh, hmm. it's it's kind of mild. It, it really doesn't have, in my opinion, much of a sharpness to it, but. Yeah, the sharpness, it's, it's more of a sweet, 
It's like it's almost like the sharpness just kind of cuts back the sweet Thank a little you. bit. This is remarkable though, right here. Yeah, try this. Yeah, try what that. What is this? This is the uh, this is the Cypress, Cypress. Uh, G Midnight Moon. It's almost got a crunchiness to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's aged when the, when you get an aged cheese like this, they they crystallize, and that's, that's what it is. yeah, that's what the I'm crystallization. I'm a big crystal is. fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. Well, that Taylor, totally amazing selections. So congratulations on that. Thank you. And uh, this, I think, is probably one of our show's most decadent episodes of food. Well, hey, Dr. Bill is always great. He's my go-to guy. The possibilities with beer, in mm. my humble opinion, are far greater than they truly are yeah. with wine. And, and I came from a wine yeah. background. And what I like about him is he's not afraid to kind of step outside of what the, the traditional beer pairings are. He kind of is a little bit avant-garde and, and mm -hmm. you know, risky. And, you know, I think that's really awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, and it, it kind of takes me back to the original topic of ladies. And um, one of the conversations that I've, I've run into with women is that a lot of the reason they say, oh, I like wine because I like to pair it with food. I like to eat food with it. I don't like to just... And there's that viewpoint that beer is to just... You just drink beer. Right. And that you don't really pair beer. And I think I've run into that more with women. I don't know if that's like a sexist thing or whatever, but... I've run into that viewpoint more with women than men because I think men are more happy with whatever they have in front of them. Like you, you have this like men are like, oh, you got a pizza, awesome, got some beer, beautiful, done. Whereas women are more like, mm, I want this and I want that. They're a little more picky with what they're going to put in their mouth. But I think it's important that women realize that wine, wine does not actually pair as well with food as beer does. There's very limited numbers of things that you can pair properly so with wine. That you and you have still wide range with beer that you can hit almost. I mean, because you literally can pair almost anything with beer with a certain style of beer or whatever. Well, and I think women are um, more interested in, in general, but I mean, there's some mm. women who don't cook. I happen to be a cook, so I love, you know, just the the art of of pairing food with anything, and it's it's all about the process for me. I mean, there's nothing more um, fulfilling than having people in your home enjoying good food. Good beer or wine, and you know, just it's it's what brings people together. I think guys, you're right. They, you know, they they just like the taste of the beer. But I think we could bring more people into the craft beer movement if they realized what the possibilities mm -hmm. were, and whether they're a cook or not. And I think there's so many facets of, of craft beer that are appealing to women, but the message isn't getting out there. Yeah, and I think that there are some breweries that are kind of like taking the lead on that. I know in the San Diego area, the Stone has their women-only beer universities, which are, have been a pretty big success. I wouldn't know because they don't let me in, whatever. Um, <laughs> but you have you told me that they get 40, 50 people at those things, right? Absolutely. They've been sold out um, every time I think I've been to all of them. And what's amazing about them is it provides a, a real neutral environment uh, where no question is, is stupid to ask. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important for women is they... They have to not be intimidated by the process, and the age range has been uh, staggering. Uh, at one of the venues, um, it was a, a two ago, there was a 75-year-old woman who told a story about, um, during Prohibition, how her parents were home brewers, and uh, they used a curling iron um, as the, the, the heat, heat source. source. Yeah. Wow. And mm -hmm. it was just like everybody in the wow. room from you know the early 20s, that was before they put the little stickers on the wire that said, yeah. don't put this in water. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but it's that kind of camaraderie. Um, Catherine, the, the young woman at, at Stone that teaches the class, knows a lot about beer. Um, I believe her brother works at Stone as well. And she does a really good job of, of getting people to ask questions. And there's some girls in there who are seasoned craft beer mm -hmm. drinkers, like myself, uh, IPA Bev. Um, Renee Rounds is another person. And the, the girls that are there that don't know about beer will come up to us after the class and, you know, ask, how do we get involved? And they really want to be mm -hmm. a part of it. Oh, yeah. And that's why I think it's important for girls kind of have their own learning venue. Where can women find Ladies of Craft Beer? Is it just Twitter? Uh, no. Uh, there's a fan page on uh, on uh, Facebook. But mm -hmm. the best way is to follow uh, Ladies of Craft Beer. And, and it's at, at Ladies OCB on That'll Twitter. Be like right here. And then when you... Um, when you go to the Twitter page, um, there will be a link to Facebook. Okay. And we encourage uh, men 
uh, to follow the group as well because there's nothing segregationist about this. We don't want to do women only events right. per se. We want to do things where it's just a way for it's an entry point for women to get involved. Absolutely, yeah. and and maybe also something that encourages uh, guys to bring their girlfriend that's not a beer drinker right. to a female beer event so that you know maybe they learn a little bit about Feel it. Feel more comfortable. Right. With yeah. It. yeah. So, um, and are, is Ladies of Craft Beer, is that you on Twitter? Are you the only one that runs that? No. Um, basically, Red, which is Stevie uh, from New York, mm -hmm. um, is involved with uh, at Ladies of Craft Beer and actually is the person that started it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Hop Trollop okay. uh, is involved. Um, the Hops Honey. Uh, Beer Goggins. Genevieve. Yeah, yep. Genevieve. Uh, Beer Goggins uh, okay. is also from New York. Um, there's, you know, a long list. But so it's not all secretly run by men. No, it's, <laughs> it's definitely not. And August Bush actually runs the Ladies of Crap. <laughs> no, but I will tell you that there is a, a group in the UK mm -hmm. uh, that's been kind of involved around this study on, you know, getting women into craft beer in the UK, and they're talking about the calories, which is, oh yeah, yeah. is my bum. It's not about calories. Women in the UK drink. Rum and Cokes, Whiskey and 7-Up, yeah. tons of calories um, in beer. So, um, Well, it's a misnomer to think that because you're drinking a cocktail, you're not getting as many calories as you are in a beer. The calorie count is about the same. Well, Absolutely. How much do you, do you guys know off the top of your head how many calories are in like a shot of vodka? Um, I believe it's, it depends on the style of vodka. Yeah. I think it's I mean, like around hundred. Yeah, it's that's over, what, it's that's over what I heard. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and there are some twelve ounce beers that are less shot, than hundred calories. Shot after shot, that's a yeah. lot of calories. Well, and mm -hmm. and not that fruity girl drinks like Apple Teenies, Cosmopolitans. Oh, yeah. those Once are you start adding sauces to the hundreds yeah. of calories, oh, and yeah. you know, and for me, I'm a, a sipper, and yeah. I could have this beer for a couple of hours right. and and really enjoy it and savor it. I mean, not. Too many people have seen me overindulge because I am a huge advocate for. Well, and that's another drinking. aspect of beer that's great because you know wines have a tendency where it's like you serve it at this temperature and it must be drank at this temperature and that's it. Same with alcohol. It's like this is a cold alcohol drink or it's a warm alcohol drink or whatever. Beer, you get like really complex flavors when it's cold, when it's starting to warm up, when it gets to room temperature. Like the whole flavor profile just kind of twists and turns a little bit and it's a new experience as you let a beer kind of go for an hour or so that's very true and it is somewhat um th there's a less of a range with wine there's there's mm. somewhat of that um and i think everybody has to find their style and and one of the things that <gasps> oh I oh my god Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> i would like to see um more information out there on if this is the type of drink uh, you like, red wine, for example, mm -hmm. we suggest you trying these beers. If you're a rum and coke drinker, you right. know you might like imperial <laughs> porters because or bourbon bourbon aged angel, bourbon angel, angel share. Beers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that that's the the correlation that needs to be made. And I think a girl can relate more to how another mm. girl is going to view that beer. Um, and I think that that's part of the reason why this is so important. Now we're going to let Dr. Bill bring some more decadence into our day, and we're going to shoot over to a master pairings, and I believe that I'm in this one, right? I believe so. Oh, so you'll see me in just a moment. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Master Pairings with Dr. Bill, and oh my freaking God, this, what is this? Well, uh, I decided to pair uh, one of my favorite styles of beer, a Flanders Red. Uh, mm. This is the Rodenbach Grand Cru. It's a blend. It's an old, older style of beer uh, that is done in these huge fooder tanks, which are these large oaken uh, tanks that could literally hold three dozen people. Wow. And... Um, Rodenbach has huge halls lined with these tanks, and it's a blend of a young beer, which is about three to four months, and a beer that's over a year old, or sometimes up to 18 months. Okay. And it is tart, thirst quenching, has an acetic factor, not an acidic factor, right. which gives this kind of like light balsamic vinegariness right. to it. And it just goes great with the num numerous types of food. Um, one of the foods that's marriage made in heaven is shellfish. And uh, so we did a great lobster for us to try with the, the drawn butter. And I think I'm not going to go into the details yet of how this is until we take our first bite. But I'll explain okay. why it's so magnificent. Also, oily fishes are good. That's, the, that's these things here? Yes. Those are some grilled sardines. 
Steve is. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna, I'm not sure I'm gonna like those things. Steve, but Steve's not too sure about those. They're wafting but up here as we speak. Oil, oily fish go great because of the way it cuts into it, and then uh, goat cheese, raw goat cheese. or okay. otherwise, uh, chefs are great. Uh, now, I what's have, the stuff all around the goat cheese? Uh, well, this is a fleur vert, and it has actually some herbs in it okay. uh, around it that it's caked in. And this is actually a grape leaf on this, and this is the uh, chabise. Okay. <clears throat> I'll pour you into the now defunct Rodenbach Alexander. The snifter, glass. snifter style glasses are appropriate for this? Yes, they'd be fabulous. Anything, okay. if, in a pinch, anything, even a red wine glass would work okay. really well with this. Oh, yeah. Definitely get the acetic qualities on the nose. So, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. It has this great thirst quenching characteristic yeah. that's just. It's very easy it. to drink, yeah. yeah. Easy to drink. Um, beautiful color. Um, just this great mahogany color. It's a very sexy beer. Yeah. Let's say it right now. Kind of has this sweet tartish effect, kind yeah. of like sweet and tart. It, like a, a lot of the sours have a tendency sometimes where it's like, you take them and it's like, mm, and you, it's half of your beer to get used to it, to start drinking it. Right. And with this one, it's like you get that tartness, you get that flavor, but it's not so overbearing right. that you have to get used to it. As soon as you get through those three sips, you're ready to rumble. Mm -hmm. Since you're loving the thought of sardines. Oh, um, let's start with that, yeah. Yeah, let's get you a little I don't want to be that my last flavor in my mouth. <laughs> Sardine action. Now, um, there's like bones and stuff in this. Yeah, right? but uh, really, the the bones are small. They're even edible. So, <laughs> but you're just gonna take a little of the fillet right there. That's wow. all you gotta do, Steve. Just take a little taste. This is what I do for you, people. Mm -hmm. Appreciate. <laughs> mm. Oily, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So the beer will cut right through the oil. Mm -hmm. Ooh. It'll bring out more fruit notes in the beer, some some maybe fruits you didn't recognize before. Cuts the tartness down. Yes, cuts the tartness down. It's just really enjoyable. It actually tastes really good. I'm not even gonna lie. And the, this is really salty, and the lemon the, the lemon squeeze over the top of mm -hmm. it gives it a nice little and, backbone as well. And this uh, this is comes out as strawberries, little lemon, things like that, that mm -hmm. you weren't picking up before with that particular Fish. But this, like I said, works great with mackerel, salmon, oh, yeah. things like that. I just wanted to go sardines because I saw your face when we were at the <laughs> store buying like, it. Like, oh, so. nasty. <laughs> Angry dead fish judges you. <laughs> so um, That is actually really good. I, it's surprisingly because I just am not a big fan of the oily fishes, the anchovies, mm -hmm. the sardines, those kind of things. But that's really tasty. So now let's try a couple of these cheeses. Just use your fork. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, actually, I'll cut some of this off for us. Mm. That good? Oh, that is good. It's not overly sweet. It's got a nice, it's got the sweetness to it, but not to the point that's all you taste. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Oh, that is amazing. It brings out this creaminess in the cheese, cuts away from any tartness that was there. And it almost makes it like cream cheese. Yeah, exactly. It's That's what I was thinking. So friggin' good. I got those on a bagel it's right so now. Decadent. It's awesome. Yeah, it's a great. This could be a great dessert after mm -hmm. dinner. You know, in Europe, a lot of times we eat cheese as our dessert course afterwards because it's quite enjoyable. So this works out perfectly with that. So once again, any of the Flanders red, uh, you can do uh, like Duchess de Burgoyne mm -hmm. from Verhage. And I apologize as always for my pronunciation of French and Wallonish and Flemish words. Uh, I always call it Duchess de Borgna. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, because yeah. it's a great beer and you try it. So you can try any of those beers with any kind of goat cheese, especially a Chev, oh. and it just works really well. So what do you think, lobster might be good? Um, yeah, I'm still loving this cheese, but yeah, the lobster is gonna be amazing. <laughs> well, we got plenty of the cheese, so we're gonna put that right over there. Yeah. Good Lord. Bring in a little drawn butter, mm. and uh, I did the work, so I grabbed the okay. claw. So <laughs> you just grab a piece. Let's not be shy. Lobster, I'm familiar with. The sweetness of the lobster is fabulous. The the slight salt salinity from the butter, and the extra cloying sweetness, and this is just going to cut right through. Now I'm a little sad because 
I bought these lobsters live and I kind of bonded with them. And now I'm eating them. Yeah. What better yeah. way to bond with the with the lobster than to eat it? That's Yeah, they gave their life for a greater cause. So And I'm double dipping in the And butter. they're so amazing. <laughs> it's all good. We're all friends here. It's a fabulous pairing. Yeah. It brings out the sweetness of the lobster. It it just puts this mm. Oh yeah. Fruit forward in the beer that just goes jumps out at you. This is epic. I, I hate to use an overworked used word, but this is epic. This is amazing. So what do you think? Good pairing? Awesome today? pairing. As always, it's been an excellent master pairings with Dr. Bill. And until next week, cheers. Cheers. Boom. Taylor, we want to thank you for opening up your home to us. And this is a this is a secret password protected craft beer mecca in the downtown area of San Diego. <laughs> so if you're ever in the area, you can find us on Foursquare. Um, but uh, we really appreciate you letting us come in and talk about Ladies of Craft Beer. It's a very important moment. Movement, we suggest that everyone who watches the show get on there and follow at Ladies of Craft Beer. Mm -hmm. At um, Ladies of OCB. Yeah, at Ladies at of ladies OCB. OCB. Yes. Um, get involved. Get your women involved. Bring your women to us to drink our craft beer. <laughs> Hell right. yeah. Hell yes. Hell Cheers. Yeah. Stay safe. Drink, drink beer. Cheers. Cheers.